Let's get right to it. Let's talk about the top data roles and what they do. The first role is a data analyst. It's the only entry-level role in the data space. Now, entry-level doesn't necessarily mean low paying. Skilled data analysts can make very good coin. I saw a data analyst role the other day for Power BI making up to 200 grand. That's a lot of coin for a data analyst. It's a lot of coin for anyone. A data analyst creates reports, often referred to as dashboards, and they also create KPIs. A KBI stands for Key Performance Indicator. It's a quantifiable measure over a period of time. A visual that shows a KPI may be monthly sales. Data analysts use SQL and then a tool. The three most common tools in the real world are Power BI, Tableau, and Looker. As a data analyst, you'll spend most of your time working inside the tool, creating dashboards and KPIs. The data analyst is one of the best shortcut roles to a career in data engineering or machine learning. On LogicBot, I chose Power BI because it's the most used tool in the real world. If you're starting from scratch and you want to be a data analyst, you'll need to learn SQL, Power BI, and lastly, attain the Power BI certification. The certification is going to get you interviews. The next role is the data engineer. This is a top tier role. That means there are very few to zero entry level roles available. Now, this role is going to vary depending on the job description. For example, some roles are going to be very broad and some more general. Here's a good example of that. This role is for a Snowflake data engineer. You'll be working with a data warehouse called Snowflake. Snowflake is a serverless data warehouse that works with the big three cloud providers. The big three are Azure, AWS, and GCP. I recently worked on a contract where I work with Snowflake. In this role, I used a tool called Fivetran to move the company's data from various databases to Snowflake. That was it. That's all I did. I created jobs to continually stream data into Snowflake using this tool called Fivetran. Here's a more general role. Here's a role for a data engineer on Azure. Azure is Microsoft's cloud platform. Almost all data engineers will require you to have a solid knowledge of one of the top cloud platforms. This role uses the Microsoft Tech Stack. I'll create a video soon to help you understand what tech stacks are. However, as a general rule, that means you're going to be working with tools and software from one vendor. In this example, it's all Microsoft. As a data engineer, your life is going to be data. You're going to secure it, you're going to architect places for it to live, and you're going to move it around. The next role is a SQL developer. This one's really simple to understand. You're going to be writing SQL code all day, every day. You'll be authoring entities called store procedures and views. That's it. The next role is called the DBA. DBA stands for Database Administrator. A DBA is similar to a data engineer. However, DBAs will often focus on one vendor's database. For example, I was a SQL Server DBA for most of my career. Here's what a job description looks like for a DBA. What does a DBA do? They're going to create and maintain database standards and policies. They're going to be responsible for database design, creation, and testing activities. They're going to manage database availability and performance, including incident and problem management and resolution. Their job is to ensure a smooth operation of the company's relational database operations. This is a role I'd steer clear of. They aren't paid as well as the other roles, and they're a lot more technical. Next up is the machine learning engineer. Now, why do I consider this a data role? Because it's a well-known fact that 80% or more of your work, it's going to be working with data. Here's what a real-world job posting looks like. Notice that first skill? Yep, working with data. What does a machine learning engineer do? They work through the machine learning pipeline. Here's a visual of what the steps are in that process. The first two steps are where you're going to spend most of your time. What does data sourcing really mean? In the real world, you don't download nicely cleansed CSV files to build your models against. You're going to be the one who will need to gather the data. On most projects, that means you're going to need to write the SQL code to pull that data into a single data set. Inside databases, data is housed in various tables. You're going to need to author all the code needed to pull that together and then extract it for modeling. After that data is extracted, you're going to need to clean it. This means applying statistical techniques to your data. If your data isn't clean, your model's going to suck. Feature selection and feature engineering are what differentiate a good model from the best model. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day.